Hey, uh, my name is Andy Teasdall, and I am from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I'm a freshman here at Clemson University. Um, right now I'm a PRTM major, and I recently went to the New Student Dialogue um, and talked about, or went to the New Student Dialogue, uh, Second Happiest Campus, a dialogue on mental health at Clemson. Um, and this was the, the summary of it was a lack of understanding and significant stigma persists among college students regarding mental health. This dialogue aims to equip students with tools and language to better connect and appreciate students all along the mental health uh, continuum. Students are encouraged to explore their own values as well as listen to and learn from the experience of their peers. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting. I honestly wasn't looking forward to going to it at first, but I think it was good. Um, when we first got there, we, we, um, by the, just based on the people who were, uh, sitting next to us, we, um, kind of rated our, what, what was most important to us. Like, um, as a, for instance, I put like who I was, like I'm a male, like I'm a, um, like my social class, just like, cause that's like kind of things I can't control just based off like my parents and what they've done for me. But there's also like religion and that was up there for me. Uh, but then someone, some guy that was sitting next to me, he actually had religion last cause just cause he wasn't as religious as some other people. Uh, but we just talked about that and just basically showed how people can be different, but still, still people and you still got to respect them. Um, so then we did that, and we split up into groups. We numbered off like one through eight around the classroom, and we we were then supposed to draw someone who um, we got a mental disorder, and we were supposed to draw them on the whiteboard. And and what happened was the correct answer was supposed to be you can't draw them because it's they don't look anything different from anybody else like someone who's depressed is like it's just hiding you can't you can't see that and someone who's anorexic or has bulimia is is maybe a little bit skinnier of course but like they're still normal they're still they're sick will be cool they still can be an athlete they can still be a part of the social crowd they can just blend in with everyone else so they there's no certain stereotype for any one person um in my group kind of figured that out and then we we talked about um what what we went around and we talked about like if we knew anybody and then like a small circle which was i thought better because i'm not one to talk in front of a big group but i can talk more so in front of a small group and we we went around and when i was in um we had one for post-traumatic stress disorder which uh is more common amongst um veterans and people who've served in the military thankfully and we salute out to our veterans of course but uh i could kind of relate to that because the first couple weeks here uh we had a fire drill at burns and um and on the way back obviously it was crowded i tr we tried to fit too many guys in the elevator than possible and it was not a good idea and it actually got stuck going up from the first to the second floor so we were stuck in between that and um after that i was more hesitant anybody it was stupid of course but every any time we got in a in a elevator with more than probably about eight people i would start like freaking out like start like blushing my face would turn around my friends who like knew what happened were just like andy like come on you'll, you'll be all right um so that was tough especially going up because gravity but um we were stuck in there for 30 minutes with 25 people, but I'm better now, thankfully, just from like giving it time and being smarter about it. Um, but then it was interesting to hear other people as well. Um, there were more active voices than others. Um, like I said, I'm not one to talk in front of like crowds just because I don't, I don't you care for it. Um, but I mean, I'm still, I'm still paying attention even if I'm not talking. Um, so I wasn't necessarily reserved, but I, I talked and I shared some experience and I listened and I wasn't like a jerk to anybody, of course, but, um, one of our, 
one of our, uh, I guess, person in charge, was a guy, he actually had uh, depression when he was, I think, in middle school or high school, and that was kind of unreal because I've never met anybody with, like, clinically depressed and just kind of like a wake-up call that there are people, and thankfully me nor anybody in my family has had it, um, if not, if too bad at least. Um, so that was kind of weird, or, but he seemed okay now, and it was kind of, I was kind of surprised he was able to talk about it so well as he did. Um, uh, I think this dialogue is component just to understand there are different people out in the universe and in the world than just us and we in college is a time to open our minds up to different people and diversity and different people and this is a good way to know that they can be the same people but still be so different in a way that you would never know um, and uh, I, I think it's useful I was kind of putting this off for a while but it's not that bad I and mean, if you just do it I actually did read waiting home book I, I I actually did read it but I did hold off the essay for a while but that wasn't I, I actually enjoyed reading the book uh, it wasn't too bad and I uh, just just procrastinating but I don't think this is a bad bad thing for Clemson I think it's fine I know some other schools are doing it as well and I'm sure it looks good especially cool to have that author come to talk to us but as a, as a total of library 100 um, I think that's all. Thank you. Um, Andy Teasdale once again. Um, thank you. Have a good day.